story time about how my boyfriend found out that I was cheating on him with his best friend. So a little background information. We're gonna call my boyfriend Tyler. Tyler and I had been dating since he was 16 and I was 13. And now it was my freshman year in high school and his senior year. And we're gonna call his best friend Jaden. Now there was one really big problem with Tyler and I's relationship. I was pretty much dating Jaden too. Now if you don't get what I mean by that, Jaden was there for literally every single thing that we did in our relationship. Anytime I would invite Tyler over, guess who was walking in right behind him? Jaden. Anytime that Tyler and I went on dates, guess who was there? Jaden. And there wouldn't even be another girl there. He would literally just third wheel on our dates. And I talked to Tyler about it before and he's like, well, I don't know what you want me to do. He's my best friend. So fast forward, the one day Tyler and Jaden are both over my house. So like I said, Jaden and Tyler are both at my house and Tyler ends up getting a call. And it was his mom telling him that his brother had just passed away. So Tyler told Jaden that he needed to find a ride home. And after that time, he left immediately. Now me, I do not know what the hell to do. Because Jaden and I had never been left alone before. And it wasn't really because Tyler didn't trust us. It was more of though we didn't really have a reason to be alone together. So that night, he was supposed to wait for my parents to get home so that way they could drive him. But I ended up getting him an Uber because he said that he liked me and I did not know what to do. Fast forward, while my boyfriend is in the grieving stages, I was messing with his best friend behind his back. And the one day he had walked in on us doing spicy things. And after he had his whole family posting things about me on Facebook saying that I was a whore and everything. Story time about how my best friend started seeing my mom. So we're gonna call my best friend Joey. Joey and I had been best friends since we were four years old and my family was really close with his and vice versa. And she had always been really nice to him. Of course, because he was a family friend and he was my best friend. Well, one day I thought that she liked him a little bit more than she liked me. She would always ask the weirdest questions. Like, oh, is Joey single? Or what's Joey's sexuality? Like, sis out a whole ass husband. But at the time, I didn't think anything of it because I just thought that she really wanted him and I to date. But when he turned 15, things started getting a little bit weirder. Like sometimes he would go over my house right after school, even when I wasn't there to hang out with my mother. And usually the only time he was at the house was whenever him and I were hanging out. Well, the one day I walked in and they were both sitting on the couch talking. And when they both saw me, they acted like nothing was wrong with it. So like I said, the one day I come home after school and they're both sitting on the couch already talking. And they look at me and say hi as if nothing was wrong with the situation. And then after that, Joey started mentioning how my mom was so hot. And I was like, yeah, no, she's pretty, but that's it. Well, the one day my mom left for work earlier than she usually does. So I messaged my dad and asked him if he wanted to hang out. So of course he said yes. And five hours later, I came home and I go upstairs. And I'm just like hearing things from my mother's bedroom. So I go up and I open the door. And because I don't want this video to get taken down, you guys probably can guess what I saw. So I ran out of the room, ran downstairs. I start panicking. And Joey came and hugged me and said, I'm sorry, me and your mom just love each other. So I told them both they were absolutely disgusting. So then my mom starts crying and begging me to forgive her. And now I live with my dad. Story tell about how he cheated on his baby mama with me. So a little background information, there was this boy and we're gonna call him John. John and I knew each other through one of our mutual friends. Well, 24 seven, John would post sad clothes on his Snapchat story because him and his girlfriend had just broken up. So I decided that I was gonna be Captain Sabahel and be there for him telling him it was okay. And then everything happens for a reason. Well, eventually John had developed a huge crush on me. Like he would flirt with me 24 seven, flirting me on these cute emojis. And of course my dumb ass fell for it. So after talking for a little bit, him and I started dating. Well, the one they had was on Snapchat going through his story. And he was posting a bunch of funny memes on his story that was just laughing. And Phil like loved the laugh thing that he posted on his story. It was this picture of a baby girl thing. I can't wait to meet you from Dada. So with my crazy ass, I jumped on the phone and started cussing him out. And then he goes, what are you talking about? That's my little sister. So like I said, when I confronted him about it, he said that it was a picture of his baby sister. 
always with the Alabama shit for what reason I don't know. But he calls me the next day and he starts apologizing about everything. And then he decides to make a new Snapchat account and starts talking to me on there. Thinking that I was just gonna block his other account. He posts a picture of his baby mama. So at this point, my Virgo self and I were done with the bullshit. By the way, he's a Gemini, so if that boofin explained it, I don't know what will. So I start dating my new man and I commented on all his posts. I guess I'm not surprised he's not the only bitch you're fronting with. And if you try lying, I'm going to spill the tea. Like, I just think that it's really funny how females just think that their men are so loyal. Even when you literally expose their man with every piece of evidence. Well, the girl who sent this in has a special message for all of us. I promise you that men ain't shit. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Storytime of why it's never good to be in a best friend group of three. So a little background information. I was in fourth grade and I was nine years old about to turn 10. Now I know you're thinking that's really young. Well sis, I was just smart enough to see the red flags early on, unlike half of you who probably didn't see them. Anyway, so I had two friends we're gonna call the one Becky and the one Mia. Now let me tell you a little bit about Becky. Becky was kind of a bitch. Now any time that she saw Mia and I having our own conversation, she would pretty much bully us and she would have two of her other friends tag along and do it also, Brooklyn and Riley. So the one day we're walking to PE and Mia and I are having a conversation and in our gym class, you would line up in groups of three. So it would go Mia, Becky, and then me. Well, because I wanted to finish my conversation with Mia, I decided to sit in Becky's spot. So we're sitting down and then Becky marches over to where we're sitting and just stands there and stares at us. Then she walks away and goes and sits with her other friends. And at the end of gym class, she comes back over to us. But like I said, Brittany hated it whenever Mia and I would have our own conversation. And I sat in Becky's spot in gym class. And then she got mad at us because I wanted to finish my conversation with Mia. So she goes over with her other friends that literally bully Mia and I. So at the end of gym class, she walks up to both of us with Brooklyn. And she literally is just standing there. And then Brooklyn goes, do you need me to do it for you? Me and I look at each other like, what the fuck is going on? And then Brittany's like, no, I just wanted to tell you guys that I don't want to be friends with you anymore. She was like, you guys are just so fake. Like you never include me in anything. Which was completely not true, but we were like, whatever. So then the next day at school, Brittany comes up to Mia and I, and she's like, hey guys. Like this bitch was bipolar as fuck. And we're like, we thought you didn't want to be friends with us anymore. And she was like, no, I just meant I didn't want to be best friends. Story time about the worst day of my life. So a little background information. I was 16 at the time, and I was either in eighth grade or ninth grade, but I really don't remember. And I had this boyfriend who we are going to call Cameron. We had been dating for three years, but before him and I got together, we were best friends. Well, I also was in a friend group with myself, Amber, and this girl named Skye. Now I wouldn't really call Skye a pick me girl. She was more of a jealous best friend. For example, the one day we went shopping for dresses and I picked this one out that I really liked and that looked super good on me. Amber was like, OMG, you look so beautiful. And then Skye, she was like, that dress is ugly and it makes you look fat. Well, after that, I told her I didn't care what she said and that I was going to get the dress anyways. Well, she didn't like the fact that I wasn't going to listen to her, so she didn't talk to me for two whole weeks. And then after, she texted me saying that she forgives me, even though I didn't apologize, but okay. Well, then, me being stupid, I introduced her to my boyfriend. Bad idea. So like I said, me being stupid, I introduced her to my boyfriend. Well, after that, Cameron started acting really weird. Like him and I, we would literally hang out with each other 24 seven. And now he was always too busy for me and we would only talk at school. And because I was in all the smart classes and stuff, I would go over to his house to tutor him because you know, I was like the one who was winning every single fucking award for being smart. Well, I came over on the day that I would usually tutor him. And when I went over there, his mom was like, oh, he's busy, he's out with his friends. So then I went home and I got bored and I opened Instagram. Well, I see that he's at a party with Sky, and they didn't even invite me. So I asked him about it, and he said, oh, it was her and her boyfriend's party. I was like, that wasn't really an excuse for why you didn't invite me. So he apologized and I forgave him. Well, five weeks later, I found out that him and her did the nasty, and she got pregnant. And then there was a rumor going around that they made out in the bathroom. So I blocked both of them and never saw them again. about how this boy stabbed me with a pencil in kindergarten. 
So a little background information, I was six years old again in kindergarten, obviously. I'm not gonna lie, this story kind of shows that it doesn't matter how old a child is, they can literally still be very mean and yeah. Well, during the middle of the school year, there was this new kid who came to our class and his name was Freddy. Now, Freddy coming in in the middle of the year was kind of sad because everybody already had their friends. They didn't really want to talk to the new kid. And what made it even worse is was the fact that he was a teacher's pet and he was the teacher's favorite. So he was always picked to go to the board and be the wine leader, which made the kids hate him even more. For example, during lunch, Freddy would go and try to sit with some of the kids and they would call the teacher over, say that she was doing something that was annoying them or really gross. And the teachers would remove him and put him in a table alone by himself. And I was one of the kids that didn't really make fun of him. I just kind of sat back and laughed, which I know is terrible. But like I said, everybody would pretty much bully him. And I was one of the kids that just sat back and laughed, didn't say anything to him directly. Eventually, we were getting in trouble for discluding him. We would all have to stay inside during recess with our heads down on the desk in the dark. So then everybody act like they were gonna include him. Like the one time they were like, okay, we're playing hide and seek, you know, you go hide. And then they never went to find him. So then this kid actually started getting violent. My guess is because the teachers and principal were not doing anything about it. And everybody was wanting, you would purposely trip kids. This one time, this girl bought in parcels with a whole class, and she didn't give him one. This is because he felt sick the one day, and all the kids went out to recess. And he went around and broke every single pencil. And I came in and I found it, so I told the teacher. And then during nap time, he put his mat on me. And when I finally fall asleep, he literally comes over and stabs me in the back of the neck with a pencil. Story came about why my sister is probably worse than yours. So let him and I find information. My sister and I were both 16 and in our sophomore year of high school. And yes, my sister and I were twins, but we were the complete opposite. She was the girly girl and I was a tomboy. But the summer before our sophomore year, we both got grounded because we were driving my dad's car without our license and we wrecked it. So we ended up summing all summer together, which was very unusual because it was like her and I were acquaintances living in the same house. Well, over that summer, we got super close and she ended up turning me into a girly girl. She taught me how to take care of my skin, do my hair, do my makeup, and how I dress. Now, mind you, once we got into high school, she never stoked me because that wasn't a part of the little clique that she was in. So she was like, yeah, you can finally hang out with my friends and I am super excited. So school starts, I end up becoming friends with all of her friends and my sister's really good friends with this one boy. But she had only said that she never liked him like that. So she had abused us, him and I started talking and we both ended up liking each other. So like I said, my sister and I start school, I become friends with her friends and she introduces me to this guy that she's been best friends with for a while. Him and I end up talking, I really like him, he really likes me. And my sister would always hype me up to be like, oh my God, he should get with him. He's a, such a nice guy. Line. You guys would look so great together. So the one week he asked me if I wanted to go on a date with him, and of course I said yes. So I ran to my sister's room. I was so excited to tell her. So I don't armor door. I go in and I'm like, oh my gosh, guess what? She's like, what? I'm like, he asked me out on a date, and she just sits and stares at me. And when I ask her what's wrong, well, she's like, oh my god, you knew that I liked him. You're such a bad sister. I would have never done this to you. So then I started to feel bad, but then I didn't because I remembered how she used to hype me up. So the next day, a few hours before my date, she comes in my room. She's like, hey, I'm really sorry about how I acted yesterday. I would love to help you get ready for your date if you'll let me. I feel so bad. And with sister, so of course I get over it. And I tell her, yes, I want her to help me. Life for part three. Story time. My boyfriend cheated on me with the girl best friend. So a little background information. I was 17 and a junior in high school, and my boyfriend and I had been dating for a year. But just a little backstory about when we got together. So there were definitely some red flags that I missed, okay? One of them being that he had a girl best friend. And I don't care what y'all have to say if that makes me insecure or what, but coming from someone who has been the girl best friend, I knew this was not good at all. Especially whenever we first started dating and she was still being super friendly with him, meaning she would hold his hand, she would hang on him 24 seven. And when I told him I was super uncomfortable with that and I felt like there needed to be some boundaries, he was like, um, yeah, I told you what it was whenever we got together. So if you don't like that, then just break up with me. Looking back on it now, that was also a red flag because I feel like he was telling me to break up with him so that way he didn't have to break up with me. So like I said, she would still hang all over him and he pretty much told me, if you don't like that, then you can leave. 
Obviously, I did not want to leave because I liked him and he was my boyfriend. So I just kept putting up with it and eventually, you know, we got six months into our relationship. So at that point, I'm thinking maybe I have a little bit more authority, you know, to be like, hey, I don't like the way that she acts around you. You guys can't hang out like that anymore. And they would hang out alone together. He would take her to dinner. So I literally tried telling him that the stuff that they do together is relationship stuff. And he was like, that's not true at all because we did all this stuff before you and I even got together. So anyways, like I said, six months in, I'm like, hey, I don't like the way that you guys are hanging around each other. Once again, he gives me the same excuse. So he pretty much said that he didn't care. And the one night him and I were supposed to hang out, but he canceled on me last minute. And her and I didn't get along and she never Snapchatted me before, but then I get a Snapchat of her and him making out at his house. Story time about why I will never babysit ever again. So a little background information, I was 17 and a senior in high school. And my parents were super annoyed about the fact that I hadn't had a job since I was 14. So the friends just happened to need a babysitter. So they told me that I had to do it. So fast forward, I go over there super early in the morning and the mom had already left for work. And the dad, who we're gonna call Will, he was just about to leave. And before he walked out the door, he told me that there was a list of things that needed to be done before they got home. So their daughter, Autumn, who was five years old, she was still sleeping. And I was reading through the list and it was just normal stuff, like nap time at two o'clock, no pop after seven o'clock, that sort of stuff. And then it had an arrow pointing towards the back. And when I flipped the page over, it said, by the way, Autumn is scared to bathe by herself, so please get a shower with her. And I was not comfortable with that, so I called my mom and I told her about it. So like I said, I flipped the page over and it said that their daughter was scared to bathe alone, so I would have to take a shower with her. And I called my mom and I told her about it. And she was like, well, honey, that doesn't sound that weird. Don't you remember when your little brother was scared of the toilet and we would have to take him to the bathroom and stand there with him for 20 minutes while he tried to go to the bathroom? So I was super annoyed that she was even comparing those two situations because first of all, that was my little brother. Second of all, this is just freaking weird. So I told her to bring my bathing suit over and then I did everything on the list. Fast forward, Autumn said that she really liked me so her parents wanted me to come over and babysit again. So I did and whenever I was setting up the shower that day, there was a stack of towels sitting on the toilet and when I picked it up to move it, a camera fell out of the pile of towels as soon as I picked it up and it was recording. I was really weirded out, but I wanted to show it to my mom. So I put it in my book bag and went home that night, like for part three. Story come about why I hate Valentine's Day. So a little background information, I was 22 years old and I had been dating this guy for almost a year. And we're gonna call him Jimmy. Most of Jimmy and my relationship have been long distance because literally after two months of us dating, he was offered a job in a different state. And I never worried about him cheating on me or anything like that because he seemed like the really honest and genuine guy. But of course I was wrong because he probably couldn't do anything for Valentine's Day because he had to work. So me, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm just gonna fly to him, you know, so we can spend Valentine's Day together. And it'll be in my surprise. So a few days before Valentine's Day, I get my plane ticket and I wanted to do something special. So I wore some nice lingerie under a trench pill. Well, fast forward, my thing lands and I get an Uber to his apartment. And when I knock on his door, I hear a woman's voice from inside say, don't worry, I'll do the door. So like I said, I Uber to his apartment and I knock on the door and I hear some woman from inside say, don't worry, babe, I'll get it. So I hurry up and try to tie my coat because I'd untied it thinking that my boyfriend was going to open the door. But no, why would my boyfriend open his own door to his own apartment that he lives alone in? So she opens the door and she's like, hi, what can I help you with? And I'm like, oh, is this apartment blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, well, is Jimmy here? And she was like, yeah. So she calls Jimmy over to the door. I look directly at him and I'm like, oh, is this like your friend or something? And she's like, excuse me, I'm his fiance. So I'm looking at him all confused and I start screaming that he's a liar, a cheater, put bait, go call the police. I have no idea who this woman is. She sounds crazy. Whose fiance walks away. He goes, I'm sorry, I'll call you later. And the security escorts me off the property. Needless to say, I never talk to him ever again. Story time about why you just can't bring some friends around your boyfriend. So a little background information, I'm a 17 and a junior in high school, and I have been best friends with this one girl who we're gonna call Lily for about two years. Now Lily and I weren't your ordinary best friends, 
We were the ones that would party together, but we would never talk about anything serious. And when I mean serious things, I mean like a secret that you don't want anybody to know. Just for a little example, the one time I told her that I thought I was pregnant, and clearly she knew that I was super scared and I told her I don't want anybody to know, please don't say anything. Um, yeah, in about 30 minutes, I had like 20 people asking me if I was pregnant, and then somehow my parents found out. She's also the best friend that you keep away from any guy that you like. Well, I went to dating this guy who worked at the court garage for six months, and obviously now that I have a boyfriend, I've stopped hanging out with her as much. But my whole thing is she would never give me a heads up on plans. She would literally just text me and be like, hey, we're going out tonight. But I would touch her back and I would be like, sorry, I can't, I already have plans with Jared. So this made her really, so like I said, she was getting very upset with the fact that she would ask me to make plans last minute and I would tell her that I'm busy with my boyfriend. And this went on throughout Jared and I's whole relationship, but it wasn't like I would ignore her. I would still hang out with her. I just wouldn't go and party and stuff like that because I respected my relationship. She would also always ask me to not bring my boyfriend to these parties. And that's another reason why I wouldn't go. So the one night she's like, listen, you know, come out with me, you bring your boyfriend it won't be a problem which was a shocker so I was a little bit skeptical but I said okay so we go to this party and usually whenever I'm with Lily I get really messed up and I was trying to pace myself this night and then she's like come on you don't mind if she gets drunk right Jared of course him wanting me to have fun he said no he doesn't mind she calls us a new word and then she asked for my boyfriend's snapchat just so that when she could check up on us because I was too drunk the entire ride home Lily is blowing up Jared's phone and we just think that she's trying to check on us um, no. Instead, when we got home, we opened his phone, and it was actually Lily sending him a bunch of naked pictures. Storytell allow how my sister sold my nudes. Yes, my own sister. So a little background information, I was in 12th grade, and I was pretty popular. And my sister, on the other hand, she was in 9th grade. I'm not even saying this to boost my ego, but she was jealous of me and everybody could tell. Maybe because of the fact that she didn't have her high school glow up, you know, she low-key still looked like a 6th grader. And there were very few guys who gave her attention, and some of the guys would even tell her that I was hotter than her. But that did not help the situation at all. For a week, I even paid attention to any of these guys because I had a boyfriend. And my sister and I still shared a room even though our brothers got their own rooms. So she could literally go through my shit anytime she wanted. Well, since we shared a room and I never thought that she would sell my nudes, Prince, I would take these expensive pictures of myself while she was in the room. Well, she had this one friend named Jessica who also was weirdly obsessed with me. I think she was saying how funny it would be to sell someone's nudes. So like I said, my sister had this friend and the one day they were trying to about how funny it would be to sell somebody's pics. We all laughed, joked about it, the conversation was over and done with, I thought that was it. Like in all honesty, I thought it was one of those things where you guys need plans to do something and then after the conversation you never talk about with again and you never actually do it. You said he were in a new because it was so out of pocket. So my sister's friend slept over that night and I looked up, went to school earlier because I have volunteer work to do so my sister usually just takes the bus. Well, I still leave off my computer at school so I called my sister, asked her if she could grab it and bring it in the school. Now, my computer is connected to my phone. Well, your fake assigned it could be little creeps and they went on my computer and they found my pictures and they sent them to themselves. And since my phone and computer are hooked up, I was able to see that they sent the pictures to themselves. So I start blowing up her phone, but by first period, I had a bunch of people telling me that they were about to buy my pictures. My sister literally made an ad and put it on Snapchat. My boyfriend broke up with me and I never talked to her ever. So we tell me about why my aunt put me back into foster care. Yes, she put me back into foster camp. So a little background information, I was 15 years old and a sophomore in high school. But whenever I was 12 years old, I was in a very abusive household and I had two younger sisters. One was 11 and the other one was nine. Fast forward, all of us were put into foster care. I got placed for the many shelters slash group homes because of my behavioral issues. While I was going through all of this, my sisters were both in steady homes, so that kind of sucked in the- I was happy for them, but at the same time, I was going through hell. But eventually, my grandma and my dad passed away, so my aunt decided that she wanted my sisters and I. So she got her foster license, and the deeds leading up to whenever we were supposed to move them with her were absolute garbage. There was this one girl who was 19 years old, her and I did not get along, and I was supposed to leave that Wednesday, but I didn't want to wait, so I decided that I was going to get myself kicked out in hopes that I would be able to move them with my aunt sooner. So like I said, I found a way that I was going to get kicked out and it was by fighting this girl. And yes, I won. But fast forward, eventually my sisters and I moved in with my aunt. And if you guys ever heard the phrase honeymoon, you probably think of a relationship, right? Wrong. I was actually shocked about how fast everything went downhill whenever we got there. Like eventually my cousins just started being mean to me for no reason while they favored my sisters. 
And when I say cousin, you guys are probably thinking they're around my age. No, they were actually in their 20s. Hell, one was even close to 30. Like these were grown ass adults beating on a 15 year old. So that's really my cousins, my aunt and I are fighting almost every single day. And the one that my sister and I got into an argument that eventually turned into us fighting. And my cousins love to jump in every fight that my sister and I have. Well, they jumped in this fight and instead of helping break it up, they actually made it worse. The one was holding my leg down and eventually I got it up and I kicked her in the face. And when I thought that it was my fault, sir, she sent me to foster care. 